Let's size them up right now from Foxwoods as we check the tail of the tape. The champion Forrest turns 37 in February. Picharillo pushing 38, his birthday next month. Five, ten and a half as Forrest with the inch and a half uh, height advantage and the slight edge in reach and at yesterday's weigh-in as reported earlier Forrest a little over at first an hour later came back at 153 Picharillo 152 and the notable rules for this world title bout no standing eight count no three knockdown rule a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round if an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds it's a no decision after four they go to the scorecards and if a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter cannot continue he'll lose by TKO so here at Foxwoods Resort Casino, Mashantucket, Connecticut, getting ready for Vernon Forrest versus McKelly Picciarillo for the WBC Super Welterweight crown. Let's get the introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from Foxwoods Resort and Casino here in Mashantucket, Connecticut, at this time we present our co-featured bout of the evening brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with Foxwoods and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, the President Jose Suleiman, the Supervisor Michael George, along with the Mashantucket Pequot Athletic Commission. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Rome, Italy, Massimo Barrovecchio. From Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. From Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Jack Woodburn. And our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Arthur Mercanti. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger. He is on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim, hailing from Modugno, Italy. He weighed in at a trim and ready 152 pounds with a record of 48 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He has 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former IBF welterweight champion of the world, currently ranked the WBC number two super welterweight contender, introducing Michele, the gentleman Piccirillo. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver trunks with purple and black trim, and fighting out of his hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. He weighed in at a ready 153 pounds, his record 39 wins, two losses, one no contest, with 28 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the three-time world champion in two weight divisions and the current WBC super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Vernon, the Viper Forest. Mercanti now to give instructions. Let's go, champ. Good evening, gentlemen. You received your rules early in the night by the commission. Let's go toe to toe, touch gloves. Good luck to the both of you. We close in on the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Rangy, long arm, quick handed here. Vernon Forrest, who said he does not see this as a gimme, calling Picciarillo a smart fighter, but feels he has the superior skills to make Picciarillo do what he wants, as he did with Valdemir. Forrest fought very confidently in his last fight, looked 100%. No problem throwing with either hand. His power, speed, and conditioning were excellent. He took risks, and he was trying for the knockout. Will he have the same mindset here against a very different kind of opponent? You know, both men have a jab that makes everything work, uh, and we see both men trying to establish it right away. Buddy McGirt, uh, the trainer, one of the trainers for Forrest, said the plan is to bring smart aggression. 
which to me means if the knockout opening is there, take it. But Pichirillo doesn't make a lot of mistakes. As mentioned, never stop. Very good defender, hard to hit cleanly. He'll certainly try to discourage Forrest as best he can, make Forrest work for it. Pichirillo in the blue, not a big puncher, but a good technician. He's durable. But he's prone to head clashes, could be slowing with age in the many hard fights. Well, Forrest, it That's it. although it a contemporary could be fresher because of the injury time off. Pichirillo is not by trade a super aggressive fighter, but he can be aggressive. And I think after the first few rounds, when we see him do, feeling out for us and trying to counter punch, I think he will bring the heat a little bit more to Vernon Forrest. Forrest landed with a left hook there. He said he'll have to make this a fight or there won't be a fight. The feeling that Pichirillo doesn't come forward, that he's strictly an outside counter puncher. Forrest insisted that if Pichirillo comes in, he'll knock him out. There's the double left jab by Picciarillo. Picciarillo mixing a nice jab again, some hooks, and he understands, and I think he does from watching the, the video of Forrest, that that's a punch you can get in from time to time. Picciarillo just isn't a left hook artist, so he doesn't want to throw a tough big right by Forrest. Forrest on the attack. He's throwing out his entire arsenal uh, here. Nice. And you saw him throw the uppercut. He just missed an uppercut that could have... A, change this fight and you uh, pointed that out in the keys the uppercut could be a factor here for Forrest but his money punch really is the big right hand which uh, he injured a couple of fights back in a very close win over Ike Corte approaching 30 seconds remaining in round one scheduled for 12 for the WBC super welterweight title first defense for Forrest in the silver and purple with a good left hook there, a left hook by uh, Forrest, left-right combination, the left uh, right. landed, the right, right. missed. So a fine opening round for the champion, Vernon Forrest, as we head for the Stop bell. Time. Nice, fellas. A big one, okay? Okay. Make everything come off the jab. Let everything come off the jab. You keep touching him downstairs, okay? okay? You land him one good shot upstairs, but after that, you go for the next good shot, and he's pulling back. Okay. So you go upstairs, bring, bring the next one downstairs, gotta move okay? Over. And keep the jab going downstairs, and then the right hand downstairs, okay? okay? But come behind the jab. Go ahead, Al. Okay. Remember where the head shots go at? Yeah. You go into the head. Don't let him fool you with that. Okay. Well, Vernon Forrest lands a nice straight right hand. The jab set that up. Picciarillo in a position where he got nailed with that right hand. Now, Forrest landing a lot of punches there. He's getting ready to throw the uppercut, which didn't land, but he knows that punch could be an important one on the inside for him. Keeps ripping shots, and there was the uppercut that didn't quite get there for Vernon Forrest. An all-star corner in there with uh, Buddy McGirt and Al Mitchell, who was the Olympic coach in the 1996 team, and also great cut man Jimmy Glenn. The venerable Jimmy Glenn, the ubiquitous Buddy McGirt. Every time we turn around, there's Buddy. Well, it just looks like Picciarillo's having a lot of trouble handling the, the hand speed of Vernon Forrest. Almost everything seems to be connecting. You know, one of the misnomers about Forrest, and he addressed it, is that somehow he's not an exciting fighter. Good right by Vernon Forrest. He is aggressive. People think of him sometimes as more passive than he is, but uh, he's, his recent fights with Corte and Baldemir, he performed very well offensively. He's a boxer who can fight. Picciarillo offers something up there, but not uh, any damage. There's the jab and a straight right hand by Picciarillo. I think he needs to just keep throwing that over and over and over again. It's the thing that can land against Forrest. Wow, Forrest landed a big run. Forrest, once again, all over Picciarillo. These are the rounds where, against Mayorga, for instance, Mayorga had Picciarillo down several times. It looked like Picciarillo was out of the fight, but he hung in there. And in recent fights, in his last couple of fights, Pietrillo has won with knockouts in the 11th and 12th rounds. He hangs in there, hard to get him out of there, and then in the later rounds, he's effective. We'll see if that's the case in this fight. Well, this apparently is the example of the smart, controlled aggression 
The game plan of Vernon Forrest. Forrest letting his hands go, left right combination, backing Picciarillo up. Going to the body with the jab, able to block that left hook by Picciarillo. So Vernon Forrest sparkling here over the first two. And even the feints that Forrest throws, Picciarillo is really reacting. So the power of Vernon Forrest has made an impact on the Kelly Picciarillo at this point. Step back. You know, Forrest made the point that because he had all those injuries, he started to throw his punches not correctly. And Buddy McGirt and Al Mitchell had to work on him once he was healthy to throw the punches the right way. And he said he almost had to go back to the drawing board and relearn all the basics. First hurt his left shoulder back in 1994, but instead of getting it fixed, he took a lot of cortisone shots so he could continue fighting. Big rights by Vernon Forrest, and that punch has been a signature so far in this fight. Eventually, following Forrest's second fight with Mayorga in 03, he took two years off to have the shoulder and elbow repaired. And uh, as we said, looked up. Oh, big right hand by Forrest. It backed Pichirillo to the ropes. Final seconds of round two. Oh, and the heads came together. And you saw Forrest's reaction. The double jabs in the face, hey, uh, and you punch off that, you have an easy night. Okay? The double jabs, hey, baby. and he's, he's, going, he's going for all the face. All the face he's falling for. Them. But now, let's focus on the body a little more, champ. Okay. No, bro, so we think that's true. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm again. That happened so fast, Al. I'm not sure it was a headbutt or an elbow. Let's see what happened. Yeah, uh, yeah I guess the heads banged together there. Yeah. Yeah, it must was. Have, must have been the head. That was uh, later on in the round. And there we get a better example of it. Well, it's just, just kind of a glancing hmm. crack of the heads. I'm surprised that it had such an impact on yeah. uh, Vernon Forrest. Why is Vernon Forrest landing those jabs and straight right hands, you ask? Because he's fighting tall giving himself room to throw those punches. That is an important key for him in this fight. And he's utilizing uh, the right strategy. So we enter round three, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Excellent start for the champion, Vernon Forrest, silver and purple. Forrest, uh, an exciting offensive fighter, terrific long jab. Doubles up nicely. Big, powerful right, as we've already seen. Good left hook. All the tools and very fast hands. You know, we talked about nice jab there by Picciarillo. And the man who's in his corner, Sambu Kalambay, who was a middleweight champion in the late 80s, uh, a wonderful boxer and defensive fighter uh, who has helped Picciarillo a lot. That wins over Harold Graham, Iran Barkley, Mike the Body Snatcher, McCallum, Doug DeWitt. Terrific career for the former middleweight champ, Colin Bay. Forrest can afford to take risks. He has a, a very good chin. The only time he was really in trouble was uh, versus Mayorga, and that's probably due to the bad shoulder. It's very tough to beat when he gets into the zone, very focused and determined. And he has won the battle of the jabs for the most part uh, in this match. That's a very big ring. Uh, well over, looks like 22 to 24 feet. And so far, that's giving Pichirillo at least some room to escape, some escapability, if you will. Far as trying to keep clear of uh, Pichirillo's head. As mentioned earlier, uh, Pichirillo prone to head clashes, and we already saw one here at the end of the second round, although when that's we nice. looked at the replay, it, it didn't look that bad. <laughs> it's funny. Easy for us to say, huh? Probably right. Pichirillo cannot get going offensively. He has not been able to land. There, there's a right hand throw with conviction by uh, Pichirillo. At least that's the case. And there, there's the straight one two that I talked about before the fight. He's got to use that weapon a lot more. Only three men have beaten Pichirillo in 51 fights. Vernon Forrest looking to be number four. Step back now. 
Petrillo lost to Ricardo Mayorga, the only man to beat Forrest. Also, Corey Spinks in a Danish fighter earlier in his career. As he won the title from Spinks and then lost it in a rematch. This is a jab by Petrillo. You know, is not winning this round, but it is a better round for him. At least he's finding a little bit of a rhythm to throw some punches. Final seconds of round three from Foxwoods Resort Casino in Mashantucket, Connecticut. Forrest missing and the countering attempts there by uh, it's Pizzarillo. Clean. It's clean now. Very good, very good, Michele. Va bene così. Vedo quando porta il destro, no? Quando fai quel passo indietro, rientro subito col destro. Non andare senza mettere il destro. Il destro sinistro e via. Throw the right hand when it. È facile apprendere con quel col filo, Michele. You will find that. You will get him with right hand. Go with left and go after with the right. Right, you step over with your back leg, okay? okay? Stop reaching for the head too much. When he hits the ropes, you're reaching. Nah, that's that's wasted energy. Okay. Okay, you, crack him downstairs. Okay. You don't reach when you stay behind the jab. You understand what I'm saying? Again, the clash of heads. We'll see another one, a different one. Oh, yeah, there's Petrillo coming in and punctuates it with a right hand, but the heads came together there, and of course that has been only happened during Pichirillo's fights. Now, by the way, that was Sambu Kalambay in yes. the corner of Pichirillo. Very I impressive. Uh, he was born in Zaire, but has lived in Italy a long time, and obviously uh, he's yeah. fluent to Italian. Our thanks to our, our translator, Christian Kerki. Round four. Kalambay thinking that the right hand ultimately will get there from Pichirillo. We'll see. Bernard Forrest is fighting a very intelligent fight. He's not laying in on the inside. He's staying on the outside using his jab and straight right hands for the most part and occasionally dipping in with the hook. Forrest, a guy who after dominating Shane Mosley in 0-2, people thought he'd, he'd just march through Mayorga on the way to Oscar De La Hoya, but Mayorga had other ideas. Stopping Forrest to the third, a shocker, followed by the close majority decision, which Forrest blamed on... Uh, Overconfidence. He, he didn't train correctly for it. There's a booming right hand over the top by Forrest that landed. Missed with that one. Digs a left hook into the body. You know, Vernon Forrest, it reminds me a little bit of Tommy Hearns. He has a very good left hook to the body, but I, I cringe when he throws it because he leaves himself open just as Tommy Hearns used to. And it, it, it's a little less effective than him staying on the outside with the jab and the straight right hand. It's a great punch, though. There's a good left hook to the body by, by Forrest. Midway through round four. Scheduled for 12. The WBC 154-pound title. Pichirillo languishing on those ropes a lot. Obviously, it's not someplace he should be. When Vernon Forrest has a fighter on the ropes, he really gets after them. We saw in the clip we ran in during the keys when he had Shane Mosley against the ropes, how he picked his punches so well. And there was that uppercut again trying, Forrest trying to get that punch in. Yeah, when he sees Pichirillo leaning in, that's the time to fire that uppercut. And Pichirillo does that. Nice little right, subtle move as nice. Forrest cut off the ring on Pichirillo. Just cut him off and was able to get another punch or two. Forrest pacing himself. He has uh, these surges, but they're usually pretty explosive when they occur. There's a right uppercut on the jaw by Forrest. And Pichirillo showing a, a solid chin. Oh, there's a body shot by Forrest. A left hook that uh, was borderline. I think the body work is starting to have a big impact on Pichirillo, so Vernon Forrest done a good job downstairs in this match. Take the body and then the head, the old boxing axiom as we tick down to the end of round four. Time! You set him up for the uppercut? Now, just give me this work on the speed now, baby. No need, no need to throw bombs. You got his respect. Okay. 
Another water. Oh, I got it right here, Jim. I got it. No. Okay. I got it. Okay. Good work, champ. Good work. Stay behind the jab. Stay relaxed, baby. You can fight like this all night. Okay. Okay? Great work by Buddy McGirt in the corner and terrific advice. Now, Brennan Forrest landing that overhand right didn't even need a jab to set it up and comes with the left hook as well. Pete's real uh, backing up against the ropes. Not a good posture for him. There he tries the uppercut. They talked about that in the corner, and then he went down to the body. That body work paying dividends for Vernon Forrest. Pretty good crowd on hand here at the Fox Arena in Foxwood. Spirited crowd as well, enjoying the action. Vernon Forrest with Kelly Picciarillo for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship. Nice jab by, by Forrest, doubling and tripling up, pushing the challenger back. You know, Pizzarillo owns his own gym in Italy, but made it quite clear that it's just for his training. He has no interest in staying in the gym business after boxing. He would rather be a television commentator. He yes. worked for a couple of shows uh, over in Italian television. He said he'd love to learn to speak English and uh, take our job. <laughs> He's a handsome guy. He might do it. <laughs> well, complete and utter domination along press row. For yeah, Forrest. I have every round for Vernon Forrest as well. <laughs> nice defensive maneuver there by Forrest, blocking that attempted right with his left arm. And... You got to be careful with that left arm. That's the one that was operated on. You know, the tenor of what Buddy McGirt said in the corner is so apparent, uh, reminding Vernon not to take extra chances, work behind the jab. Don't, you know, don't load up on your punches. They want him to just keep doing exactly what he's doing. Dang it, there you go. Stop holding, let's go. Third man of the ring, Arthur Mercanti. Oh, Left body shot there. by uh, Forrest. Yeah, that was a little low. A little low, says Mercanti. But then Pete Rillo had just thrown a couple low punches, so Forrest might have been responding. Now, remember when we were at the fighters' meeting, Al Mitchell pointed out that when Pete Rillo gets a little bit behind, Mitchell, of course, one of the trainers of Forrest, he will be more aggressive. And I believe in the coming rounds, we'll see Pete Rillo press the attack a little bit more. And he's had some late scoring knockouts. Yeah, last two fights. Uh, he knocked out Michael Jones in his last fight in the 12th round, and before that had an 11th round knockout. Uh, so he can get the job done later in the fight. Yeah, that uh, was Luca Messi. Yeah. It was right before Michael Jones of England. And those were good, those are good European junior middleweights. They're not Vernon Forrest, but they're good fighters. Yeah, he is really stepping up here against the two division champion. And he's using the jab, Pizzarillo, and the straight right hand. He's, he's now using that weapon a little bit more effectively. Okay, Chopping right hand and a jab by Pizzarillo. So it, it, it's not as if he's necessarily winning this round, but you can feel a subtle shift. At least he's getting himself in the fight a little bit. Forrest with Picciarillo momentarily pinned. Big right hand with Picciarillo on the ropes. And look out. Ooh, Arthur McCanny almost. Louder. You got to do louder. Almost took a little left hook by louder. Forrest. Little that was close. Yeah. And getting ready for the main event, Antonio Tarver, the magic man, getting set for Danny Santiago. Working back in his dressing room. Wants to get his second win in a row here on Showtime and able to get that last win over Elvin Marique in a fight in which I thought he performed pretty well, actually. Okay, in the two punch. I keep dance okay. up. And put more AI in. See, that's not So we begin round six. Yeah, it's going to be interesting with Tarver. Many wondering about his future. Does he still have that edge? 
What does he have left? Is he at the end of the road? Or will we see vintage Antonio Tarver later tonight? A lot of questions surrounding Antonio Tarver. Now Vernon Forrest in that exchange throwing the kind of a wild left hook which left him himself a little vulnerable. Pizzarillo couldn't land the counter right hand but Forrest doesn't want to be um, anxious and do silly things like throw wild punches and that's what Buddy McGirt and Al Mitchell will be cautioning him not to do. Nice hook. That rock. Pizzarillo trying to battle back with the left hook off the ropes. Another right over the top by Forrest. Watch your head. And these punches really have to be taking their toll on the soon-to-be 38-year-old Picciarillo. Vernon Forrest has done some tremendous body work in this match, and he's mixed his attack so well to both the body and the head. It's been a really superb performance by Forrest. Okay, Come on, Vern. Another punch in the belt line that gets a warning from Arthur McCanty Jr. Uh, by Forrest. Yep, yep. Nice, fellas. Nice work. We've seen uh, a few roughhouse tactics below the belt, head clashes. Stop holding now. Let's no, go. Uh, no cuts, no bleeding. Stop holding now. Left hook block by the right hand of Picciarillo. Far is showing some exquisite defense. And Picciarillo is the one coming in as the uh, Ballyhoo the defensive fighter. Ahead, well, unlike Picciarillo, who says he has no interest in being involved in the business of boxing, um, Forrest has his own promotional company. Company, what else is new? There's only four boxers that don't, but he wants to bring <laughs> matches to his area in Atlanta, North Carolina, South Carolina. He'd like to bring some big matches there. Nice poking right hand that got through by Forrest upstairs. Great, Great connect percentage oh, for Forrest. Yeah, you're right, Steve. He's landing a lot of what he throws. The jab by Picciarello falling short. That right hand came up empty. For Forrest. And the lead right hand, which we just saw a moment ago, landing so much, not always even necessary for the jab from Forrest to precede that right hand. Well, Forrest said that if Picciarillo comes forward, he's going to knock him out, and Picciarillo at times has been coming forward. Mostly from the outside, though, which is smart. Oh, big right hand, left right combination that got the attention of Picciarillo, but Picciarillo is down. An overhand right to the top of the head. Four, he claims it was an five, illegal punch behind six, his head. Seven, eight. I get him. Burn. It's being scored. A clean, knockdown. Right. And Picciarillo going down for the fifth time. time in his career. Once again indicating it was a rabbit punch. Reminiscent of when Mayorga knocked him down with a punch that landed kind of on the side of the back of the head. And we'll, of course, we'll have a chance to examine it at the moment. No sé que eu dou para disputar, eu dou meia. Pende-lhe só que é para disputar. Dá não aquele ferro. Ok, ok. It's ok. It's well, we'll get to judge for ourselves. Here is Forrest landing the right hand. On this, that's one on the side of the head. Now here we're going to see another one. Yeah, I was pretty well in the back of the head. I mean, that definitely landed in the back of the head. Whether it was intentional remains to be seen. I don't think it was, but that punch, no question, landed in the back. But in the heat of the moment, when you're not looking at a replay, pretty tough for a referee to not call that a knockdown. Oh. Picciarillo, uh, Al, uh, protesting, but uh, to no avail. So he goes down for the fifth time. Uh, you refer to Mayorga. He went down three times in 05 against Ricardo Mayorga, lost the decision. And then one time uh, in 06 versus Lucas Konechny in the European title fight. And uh, Pitarillo won that one by decision, unanimous. But this one, a questionable knockdown from Vernon Forrest. A knockdown nonetheless. And uh, a 10-8 round. But he is in uh, complete domination of Picciarillo. He's controlled this fight right from the beginning. And uh, Picciarillo now in a position, as we look at the press row scoring, uh, clearly some, there will be some desperation for him. So we're halfway through. A wild left hook attempt there. 
by Farge looking to end matters on one punch. Farge 39 and 2, one no contest with 28 knockouts. Four and two with the one no contest in world title fights. The former WBC and IBF welterweight champion making his first defense of the WBC super welterweight title. Which he won from Carlos Baldemir. You know, we vacant uh, fight. Sorry, Steve. We talked about the uppercut from Forrest, but Pete Cirillo's uppercut has landed on the inside. Now it comes Forrest banging away with that punch and the hook. Pretty good exchange there, but Forrest is getting the upper hand. But back comes Pete Cirillo. He's game. Good competitive situation here in round seven. And the difference here is power as well. Pitrillo just not as big a puncher as Forrest. That left hook hurt Pitrillo. Big right hand by Forrest. Pitrillo stands right in there. Now he backs up. And the jab Break. by Forrest keeps clean, him at clean. bay. Nice, fellas, nice. Right hand blocked by Forrest. Forrest really looking good defensively. Come on, fellas, work. Yeah, it's a very Break. good point. You know, we could easily slip past that. While Vernon Forrest has done a good job on offense, defensively, he has slipped a lot of punches, oh, blocked ahead, a lot of punches by Pichirillo. Well, that was really a nice flurry by Forrest moments ago. Final seconds of round seven. Forrest continues to, to pick Picciarillo apart surgically. Oh, 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 come on. Don't be dirty now. All right? Don't. Very good, very good, Michele. Va bene così, vedo quando porta il destro, no? Quando fai quel passo indietro, rientro subito col destro, eh? Non andare senza mettere il destro, perché il destro si rifra e via. Throw the right hand, when it... È facile prendere con quel colpi lì, Michele. You will find that. You will get him with the right hand. Go with left, and go after with the right. Non c'è girare bene. Round 8, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Super Welterweight title. Picciarillo in the blue. The challenger has been tagged by a number of huge right hands by Forrest, but doesn't seem to be that physically phased. They are making a mark on the scorecards, though. Yeah, but maybe not on his on his face. Yeah, Forrest dominating most of these rounds. Vernon Forrest seven and one in matches in which he has gone twelve rounds, and uh, Picciarillo is nine and three in twelve round decisions. <laughs> Now, we did uh, utter the words earlier that uh, Picciarillo does have some late uh, knockouts, but, uh, he's, boy, he's going to have to find some real drama to rally here. And the tenor of those fights was different. Against Michael Jones, for instance, he was ahead on the scorecard, so he was already doing some valuable work against Jones. And that was, uh, you know, a hometown uh, situation. He had the crowd behind him. And he was uh, pretty much controlling that affair. Completely different story here tonight. And you see Pichirillo, as we suggested, now that he's behind, trying to make some things happen, being aggressive, throwing a nice jab there. And let's see if that changes the tenor of this fight at all. And let's see if, in fact, Force is able to land something big as Pichirillo comes in at Tori. Once again, Pichirillo was, uh, was leaning in, so he, got, he ate a right uppercut. Midway through the eighth. Nice jab, that shotgun jab by Forrest, but uh, didn't follow it up. Body shot there with the left hook. You know, for Picciarillo at age now almost 38, obviously this is his last opportunity on the world stage right. to win a world Double title, break. you would have to think. Oh, so right for him, he, Come on. he looks at out. these last there you go. four Come rounds on. or so as his last chance. And as we said earlier, both are about the same age. is a little older, but he's uh, he's been in a lot of hard fights. 
And Forrest uh, did have those two years off to have surgery and recuperate, so he's probably got the fresher legs as a result. And from a marketing standpoint, Pete Cirillo not as nice. big a star in the division, not as well known as Vernon Forrest. Forrest, of course, the former Olympian, like Pete Cirillo was, but uh, a former champion who uh, has some cachet. A very low punch there by the corner. Forrest. Time, time, time. You all right, champ? You all right? You got five minute rest, okay? Take your five, all right? You all right? Walk it off. Suck it off. Here, walk it off. Walk it off. Walk it off. So uh, it's a warning now, okay? Now let's keep it clean. Gotcha, gotcha. All right? My bad, my bad. Are you all right? Take your time. Take your time. All right, rest. Walk it off. Walk around. When you're ready, you got five minutes. You got my five minute rest, right? You are correct, Mr. Mercati. If a fighter is hit <laughs> below the belt, you want to go? Can't continue. You go? Within five minutes, he loses. One second. He only took 45 Let's keep seconds. It clean, okay? Time in. And about 30 seconds left in the round. That looked unintentional. Yeah, both men have thrown a lot of body punches that have been right around the belt line and some a little bit low. They're both trying to work the body, so that, that will happen. Final seconds of round eight. But uh, some anxious moments there for Pizzarillo. Look out, they continue after the bell. You hit a bell, you both stop. Get a little rough in there, Al. A little on the testy side. Va bene, Michele, va bene. Stop. Good, Michele. Good, Michele. Then you play Vaselina. Vaselina. has been working the body and uh, he will dig this left hook and it is extremely low yeah that one that one did not land in a very good spot for Pichirillo and uh, Vernon Forrest uh, you heard him admit to Arthur, Arthur McCanty Jr. my bad and it was but turned out bad for Pichirillo toward the end of the round they did not hear the bell apparently and they were both firing away and Arthur McCanty Jr. had to get in harm's way He's been threatened several times. Yeah, he almost ate a, a left hook by uh, was it Vernon Forrest earlier in the fight, just able to avoid that. So Vernon Forrest now controlling this fight, and unless something really dramatic happens, he looks like he's headed toward a decision win. And I think you have to look at this fight and say that if you're grading what he did, what he's done in this fight, and how he looks. It's pretty darn impressive. He's fighting very, very well. No question about it. Vernon Forrest uh, winning just about go every ahead, round. Go ahead, uh, clean. Has That's a knockdown to his credit, even though it was uh, questionable. Might have been on the back of, uh, in fact, it was on the back of Petrillo's head. There's your press row scoring. All Forrest. Ron Borges, ESPN.com. Keith Eidick, Herald News, the record. And Jack Obermeyer from Boxing Digest. I have even more dramatically. 80-71 for, uh, for Forrest. So I think he's just pretty much controlled everything in this fight. Forrest going for his 40th win in his 15-year career. Only has the two losses to Mayorga. Long right hand. That connected and sent Picharillo back. Now the left hook blocked. And speaking of Mayorga, I'm sure people are already thinking to themselves, hey, wouldn't that be an interesting matchup for good, Vernon Forrest? Good point. Yeah, he comes up the, oh, left hook upstairs by uh, Forrest and a right uppercut on the chin. Finally got that uppercut in after that big left hook. Mayorga comes off the uh, victory over Vargas at 164. The question is, could he come down to this way? I think they, if nothing else, they could get it to a catch weight, certainly, but uh, I would think Mar Oh, wow. big right hand, and down goes Picciarillo for the second time in the fight. That one four was solid, five, and no question six, about it. Seven, eight, walk to me, bro. Come on, you all right? Going the wrong way. He's in, he's in some trouble. Wow, he was walking backwards. 
when he got the instructions walked to me. And almost a minute left to go to yeah. the round. He's got a lot of time here to survive. Forrest going for the dramatic end here. Winging away. Right hand. Left hook. Marchetti looking very closely at Picciarillo. 35 seconds left in round nine. Picciarillo trying to get through this round. And he is in difficulty. He's disoriented. He's fighting back, though. He's got grit. A very brave Picciarillo. So that knockdown, as opposed to the first, no doubt about it. And Picciarillo's going to make it through the round. On very wobbly legs. Yeah. Give me the tower, give me the tower. Yeah, you need something to work on that cut. <clears throat> Vernon Forrest getting Petro in some trouble with what was a tremendous left hook and then lands the uppercut. Those two punches alone should have done something to him, but it took this overhand right by Forrest. Lead right to put Picciarillo down. So those are three solid punches landed by Vernon Forrest. The lazy jab of Picciarillo languished out there, and Forrest was able to come over the top. You know what you have to like about this performance, Steve, even though Picciarillo, a good, decent fighter, maybe not in the top four or five in the weight division, but it's the way Vernon Forrest is beating him that's so impressive. A very convincing performance here by Vernon Forrest and uh, Picciarillo in all kinds of trouble. Another 10-8 round in that ninth round for Vernon Forrest and, and then some blood appearing from near the left eye of uh, McKelly Picciarillo. And I, I should say Picciarillo is ranked second by the WBC, but I don't know that he's universally acclaimed as one of the top oh, three or four in the division uh, overall by everybody. It is possible that the rankings sometimes are not mm, Just barely. Just. A lot of action towards the end of that last round, so... Uh, <laughs> Vernon looking for the go, second wind here. You know, Vernon Forrest came back and off the layoff fought I Corte. It was a very close match. You could tell Forrest was still figuring out how well he could do, trying to get himself back after the surgery. Better against Baldemir and even better tonight against Picciarillo. So it's been a work in progress, but you can nice, see steady so improvement from him. Able to uh, put... Picciarillo down twice. Baltimore, of course, with a, uh, a oh, concrete so chin. Very tough to get him down. <laughs> and uh, Picciarillo with a, a solid chin as well, but down twice, although the first one uh, really came from an illegal punch. But the second one, ain't no doubt about it. Beautiful right hand. I mean, it was a ferocious right hand. Come on, let's go, boys. By Forrest. Arthur McCanny urging Stop these two on. Line, no as uh, they, they sort of take the round off. It really is pretty astonishing. Pietrillo is still hanging in there. He, especially after the last one. He took some monstrous punches. And you know, th this might sound uh, a little maudlin, but this is when I respect boxers and boxing. Here's Pietrillo, a 37-year-old fighter getting dominated in a fight on, but you know go, what fellas. he hangs in there he competes and he, he, he wants to show that he can hang in against this fighter even if this might be his last major fight nice left hook to the uh, jaw by uh, Forrest getting that second win towards the end of the round Break. keep it up burn it up okay. well it's been a very rough fight for Picciarillo there have been head clashes, of course, that might have been his fault, but the low blow, oh, two knockdowns, oh, bleeding, and just uh, getting uh, outboxed, outslugged, outworked. Time! 
All right, come on. Think behind that stiff jab. We're gonna keep him off rhythm this round. Oh. These next two rounds will keep him off rhythm. Don't look to gun him out. Okay. Just do your thing. Everything we worked on in the gym, this is what we put it together. Stay relaxed. Boom, nice face. Wow, nice counter. Okay. All right, don't jump back so much. Stand your ground and fire something. Go ahead, out. Okay. Plenty of talent at 154, which is uh, being showcased tonight with Vernon Forrest. Well, we've seen Alcine and Corey Spinks. We saw Alcine win his title against Travis Sims. And Sergey Zinzarek, he's kind of the mystery man in this division. Very good fighter. Some believe he's the best at 154. Forrest would, of course, take issue with that. And while you think title unification, the fights Forrest really wants, uh, as we've mentioned, are with Ricardo Mayorga and, of course, Mayweather. All right, keep it, stay focused, stay focused. Or the winner of the Mayweather Hatton fight, I guess you could say. That's where the real big money matches are. And we mentioned Mayorga. That is a fascinating fight because of, number one, Mayorga is such a colorful character, and number two, he's kind of given himself a little bit uh, of validity uh, with some recent wins. And there's an issue to be settled there. But of course, he did beat a guy uh, and a, yes. uh, you know, who was headed towards retirement even before the fight, Vargas. You notice I said some validity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hence my statement. So we agree. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, it's round 11. Oh, and just Pizzarello is just getting batted around. Well, you know, those were two good left hooks by Pizzarello. Best oh. punches he's landed, but it doesn't even move Forrest. No, and big right hands by Forrest, dominating the action, controlling it, just setting him up with the left jab. You know, we saw Luis Maldonado, and now we're seeing Pizzarello, both underdogs who haven't quite been able to get the job done, but their bravery and courage in the ring, really extraordinary. And like Maldonado, he's still fighting, punching back, trying to win this fight, uh, and, and occasionally landing some nice punches, just not enough. Looking to go out on his shield. Kelly Picciarillo. Again, uh, complaining for a uh, rapid punch. Keep it clean. Let go. He faked the right and then shot right. out the left, and Picciarillo did not expect it. That's another one that, you know, Buddy McGirt mentioned that all the feints that Forrest is using, very effective. And uh, that's been one of the subtleties in this fight that has worked in the favor of Forrest. The other one is how well he's cut off the ring when Picciarillo tries to give him movement. A sleight of hand move there by, by Forrest, and then he finished it off with blazing speed. I'm going to tell you, this is as good as Vernon For Vern Forrest can look. Oh, heavy right hand over the top by Forrest, just as you said that, to punctuate. Remark and a right hand, and down goes Picciarillo again, and Arthur Bracani stops the fight. That's it, that's He's seen it. enough. Third oh, no, no. knockdown of the fight for Forrest, oh. and Picciarillo still down. argues he wanted to continue. I think Picciarillo hurt his, his ankle as well. That's oh, he part did. of the problem. He did, yes. Hey, there's always, you tell him there's always another day. He's trying to let them know that he hurt his ankle, too, a language issue there. Yeah, he went down uh, and twisted his uh, ankle. But he is so brave and so courageous, but just a dominating night for Vernon Forrest, just picking Picciarillo apart. Let me get one more. Yeah, no easy, he. I didn't see that good, good pick up, Al. At first, I, I thought that he was like waving to Bricani, I can still go, but completely the opposite. Well, he, he, it was an awkward, you know, way he fell, and uh, uh, it's a shame on top of everything else for him to have to suffer an injury like that. They're trying to get the uh, the shoe off as fast as they can. It uh, looks like, as Al pointed out, the ankle. He was hit and went back so awkwardly. And for this man, Vernon Forrest, he just smiles. Oh, yeah, everything good. Forrest retaining his title, his first successful defense. 
goes to 40 and 2 at 29 knockouts. His technique was so good in this fight. Uh, the jab, the straight right hand, through the uppercuts as they work on the foot of Picciarillo. Uh -huh. Splint it in here. Splint it here. And the replay will show us how awkwardly he went down and the nature of the, the injury. Big right hand pushes him back, and then there'll be another right hand. And you see his leg get caught underneath him. And from the overhead camera, we'll see a, a better view of what, you know, is a gruesome looking situation with his uh, uh, all his weight went right on to his his ankle and uh, there'll certainly be an injury to that ankle at the very least a sprain and maybe more but we'll immediately applying uh, the cold pack or the ice if there's a swelling and you can see the grimacing and the pain expression on the face of Picciarillo. You know, that's just adding insult to injury yeah. uh, because, you know, you get knocked out and uh, lose a fight and then uh, the bad circumstances create that injury. But this man, uh, if this is the end of his major fights in his career, he showed grit, determination, skill in spots, but just didn't have enough firepower to deal with Vernon Forrest. And we're, t we're told uh, by the officials here it actually could be broken. All right. Let's get the official time from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes, 21 seconds in round number 11. Our referee in charge, Arthur Mercanti, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the WBC super welterweight champion of the world, Vernon the Viper Forrest. So congratulations on a dominating victory by Vernon Forrest, one-sided, uh, and uh, they're going to take no chances, Al, with uh, McKelly Picciarillo, and they've got the uh, gurney uh, standing by to wheel him out because he just cannot put any weight on that foot. And right now, our Jim Gray is up in the ring standing by with the champion. Jim. All right, Steve, thank you very much, as you reported. Uh, his ankle could be broken according to the ringside physician who I just spoke to and they will wheel him out on the gurney they have put his leg into a splint Vernon congratulations to you on this fight uh, you were very impressive tonight were you pretty pleased with the way you fought first of all I had to thank God for giving me this victory I like to thank my sponsors on here boxing uh, post therapy and at Vera Beach and also um, who the other one Iron here. Iron here and will. Let's get to the questions. Project, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the commercial a little bit later. Come on, Vernon. Yeah. How about your performance? Uh, it was, uh, I give myself a uh, grade um, B plus. You know, I, I, he, I got hit a little bit more than I expected, but, you know, uh, I, I got the win, so I'm happy with that. Three knockdowns, and you seem to have all of your stamina. And maybe some people thought that maybe your conditioning wasn't going to be up to speed before the fight, but I guess you proved that wrong. Here's the first knockdown. He thought you held him in the back of the head. Tell us about the second. Uh, I, he went for a fake. It was like an old sucker move, you know, an old school move. Uh, I fake right. I fake, I fake left and then went right. And that's the end right there where he, where he caught his ankle. And uh, that was the end of the fight. So, Vernon, now you look so impressive tonight that uh, um, it's almost where you can take this thing uh, to yourself is it Mayorga who you'd like to go after absolutely I want Mayorga again you know uh, you know he got one legitimate win they gave him a, a win and so we got to definitely do it again but also I like to look at the win of Mayweather and uh, Haddon uh, uh, De La Hoya if he want, want to uh, get this belt back um, you know Coder if he want to come up so there's a lot of good fights out there but May um, uh, Mayorga he definitely have it what do you think would be different this time than the other two times you seen it you seen uh, you see I'm healthy you know, I can. I have all my uh, all my skills, all my all my movement, all my weapons, all my arsenal. So this time it'll be a completely different fight. Was your right hand at all injured or bothered tonight? Because it looked for a couple of rounds as though you didn't want to throw it or were hesitant. No, he he, he has um, 
he pulls back. So he have a, a, a slight movement when he pulls back. And um, a couple times I threw it, and I damn near fell out the ring. So, uh, so I had to kind of put it in my pocket for a little while and let him forget about it. And then I brought it back, you know, after a few rounds where he, he, he forgot about it. How come you're not sweating? Hey man, it, it was good work. It was a good fight. Good work. You know, I was sweating. I'm just, you know, I'm just not. I know how to be cool. I'm a cool. Let him see you sweat. Congratulations, Vern. Thank you. Terrific performance. All right, Steve, back to you now. All right, Jim. Thank you very much. The hand of the background for Vernon Forrest as we check the scoring for Forrest versus Pizzarilla. There are your judges' scorecards. Uh, Boravecchio had Forrest ahead uh, big time 98 90 same for Steve Weisfeld and the same for Jack Woodburn. Yeah totally uh, appropriate scoring uh, for them. I had a margin very similar to that and um, really Forrest was just dominating. Yeah three knockdowns in the fight although the first one was questionable for Vernon Forrest. We'll take a look at a panel of press row judges Ron Borges Keith Eidick and Jack Obermeyer. Obermeyer had the uh, the biggest uh, margin. At 99 to 90 for Vernon Forrest. So a lopsided victory for Vernon Forrest. Coming up.